Hey friends, Father Alan here. Good to see you. Welcome to Sipping on the Sabbath, our weekly look at the scripture readings for Sunday. It's already the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and today we're going to begin a multi-week look at John's Gospel, at chapter 6, and we're going to start by enrolling in Jesus' math class. According to Jesus and his mathematics, 5 plus 2 minus 5,000 equals 12. Really? It does. It equals 12. How is that possible? Well, get yourself a Bible, open up to John chapter 6, and get yourself a coffee. I'm actually trying for the first time cold brew, and let's just see how that is possible. Enrolling in Jesus math class today. <laughs> of information about me. I love math. I've always loved math. In fact, even now as an adult in middle age, I find myself counting things and calculating things. I, When I was in university, I went to St. Francis Xavier University in Nova Scotia. I took two university level courses in calculus as electives. <laughs> Crazy, I know. But anyway, I like math. And we use math to calculate things and to make conclusions. And in the first reading today, the prophet Elisha is asked by his servant, how am I to use these loaves to feed a hundred people? He was given 20 loaves of barley and was invited to feed the hundred men. And that seemed like an impossibility. He made the instant calculation. Well, if I have 20 loaves and a hundred men, then each loaf has to be divided in five. In the gospel today, John chapter 6, again, the beginning of this series of, I think it's five weeks in total, we're going to look at John chapter 6. The disciple Andrew comes before the Lord Jesus, and in light of the fact that there are 5,000 people there, he says to the Lord, what are they, that is the five loaves and two fish that were voluntarily donated by the young boy, what are they among so many people? And so he too did this mathematical calculation and figured, okay, we got five loaves and 5,000 people. That means each person is only going to get like one one thousandth of a piece of this loaf of bread, which is like what? That's like what you can put on the end of your of your thumb. So we use math to calculate things. But with the Lord Jesus, he uses a different mathematical system. He doesn't use strict math. He uses his own math. He uses a different equation. And we see a light of this, an indication of this, in the response to our psalm today. Lord, you open your hand to feed us you satisfy all our needs. That is the God that you and I serve. He opens his hand to feed us. Doesn't mean we're always going to get what we want, but it does mean we will get what it is that we need and to satisfy all of our desires. Provide, of course, they are in conformity with his will for our life, not against the Ten Commandments, the moral precepts, teachings of the church, etc. So am I allowing the Lord to purify the desires of my heart according to his mathematical equation and mathematical tabulation? With the Lord Jesus, a little is a lot. So if you want to go to your Bibles, <clears throat> Ooh, this cold brew stuff is it's strong. <laughs> go to your Bibles, uh, John chapter 6. We're going to begin by looking at verse 7. And Philip says to Jesus, Six months' wages, which is a lot of money in the time of Jesus, would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. So six months' wages, which is a lot, would only be able to provide for each person there a little. But Jesus, again, he reverses the order of the equation. And thanks to this anonymous volunteer, this young boy, who gives to Jesus the five loaves and the two fish that he had, the Lord is able to illustrate how he, 
can take a little and make it, turn it into a lot. Now, we don't know much about this young boy. Maybe he was just on his way home from the grocery store, having been sent there by his parents to go buy some loaves and some fish. He saw a crowd gathered and thought, hey, you know what, let's go check this out. And next thing you know, he's at the center of this miracle. Imagine how excited he was to go home. He had to tell, of course, his parents, his family, where the loaves and the fish were. But maybe he was able to participate and bring home to them some of the leftovers that were collected, the 12 baskets full after this miracle that Jesus performed. So he voluntarily offers what he has, a little that he has, to the Lord, and the Lord turns it into a lot. That's a lesson for you and for me. There's a small boy here. Andrew says to Jesus, this is uh, John 6, verse 9, who has these five loaves and two fish. A little with Jesus becomes a lot. And that we can equally apply to the offering of our time, our talents, the treasures that we have, placing them at the Lord's disposal. Now, over the last year and a half, this COVID-19 pandemic that we've all been experiencing has really taken a toll on us and we have really really are really feeling the consequences and the effects of it in our life emotionally psychologically spiritually financially in terms of our friendships with family friends co-workers etc in a whole host of ways and a whole different host of levels of the human experience and maybe I know I can. I can identify with this young boy. I feel that I haven't got all that much left to give. I feel I only have five loaves and two fish. If you feel that way, allow the Lord to minister to you in that experience where you are right now. Don't fight it. Don't feel, why do I feel this way? It's not a question of feeling guilty or shame, etc. It's just how we are right now because we have been through something very, very difficult, no doubt. And allow the Lord to speak to your heart and minister to you and to me. And the fact that we feel we have very little left to give is actually good news because it means that we can identify with the crowd in today's gospel and that we qualify to not only witness, but to participate in the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and the fish that we have in today's gospel that kickstarts this multiple week of reflections on the gospel of John chapter 6. And we can see and, and know in ourselves the mathematical equation of Jesus, that five loaves plus two fish minus 5,000 full stomachs equals 12 baskets of leftovers. A little with Jesus becomes a lot. And if you and I, and when you and I offer it to the Lord, the little that we have, he receives it graciously and he multiplies it and he uses it to glorify his name and to have others experience him as we experience him. On that particular plane, that place of gathering with Jesus, his disciples, the 5,000 who came there on foot, they went there because they wanted to have an experience of Jesus. They wanted to encounter him. They saw what he was doing for the sick. And they want to share in that, to experience that in their own lives. Can we identify with them? Can we see ourselves in them? I want to be with Jesus. And perhaps because of these COVID-19 restrictions that we've been living under for so many months, that ache is very real. Again, I've said this before. I think it's worth repeating. It's good for us to remember what that felt like. Because when the time comes that we have to change our routine, if we have to drive a bit farther or go to Mass at a different time, we'll remember. No, I remember what it was like to feel hungry. I remember what it was like to go a long period of time without having to be able to go to church and receive Jesus in the sacraments. So you know what? If I have to drive a bit farther 
or get up a bit earlier in the morning, I'm going to do that because I want to meet and encounter Jesus. But on that particular plane, that gathering place, we see in this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fish, the foreshadowing of, I know it's a surprise, but it's true, three, <laughs> three things, the foreshadowing of three things, the church, the Eucharist, and the priesthood. First, we see the foreshadowing of the church. Again, the people have gathered together. They've come to meet Jesus, and Jesus allows himself to be found. He wants and desires to be with them, and they come with their own particular infirmities, with their issues, with their things to be grateful for, just like us. We gather together as church every Sunday, or maybe even during the week, if that's possible, depending where you're living and what part of the country or what part of the world, the restrictions are being eased and, and lifted and more of us are able to uh, participate in the Eucharist on a more regular basis. And he, he provides for their spiritual, human, and pastoral needs. Again, that is the God that you and I serve. He's waiting to minister to us. We come before him as we are. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, often refers to the church as a field hospital. Now, it's unfortunate, in fact, it's infuriating, that many of our contemporaries have not had the experience of the church being a field hospital for them. Many have felt that the church is a closed door to them. We pray the Lord would minister to them, heal their hearts. The Lord would never stop calling them back to himself, that we as church would identify and recognize the ways in which we have failed, repent, make restitution, make changes in our own person, and say, Lord, what can I do? How can I be available? And again, I believe firmly that the Lord, through this experience of the pandemic, is calling his people back to himself. We need to be attentive, identify the new people who the Lord is bringing, welcome them, encourage them to become part of the community. And if we see that there are certain individuals who are no longer around, that we pray for the grace, the courage, the wherewithal, the words even, to go in search of them and to extend an invitation for them to come back. The church is a field hospital, and we see that in today's gospel, John chapter 6, the gathering of the people with Jesus. We also see in this passage, we're looking at the verses 1 to 15 of John 6, the foreshadowing of the Eucharist, the, the taking, the blessing, the breaking, and the giving of the five loaves and the two fish really is a foreshadowing, a parallel of what happens each time Mass is celebrated. That we present to the Lord what seems to be ordinary, bread and wine, through the ministry of the priest. Jesus takes it, he blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to us in Holy Communion. That which is presented as ordinary is given to us in a way that is extraordinary. It has been changed. It's been changed now into the actual body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus by the power and grace of the Holy Spirit and the, the words and the actions of the priest who acts in the person of Jesus himself. The powerful experience of the Eucharist, that which seems impossible, is made possible. What initially would have fit into one basket with room to spare, five loaves and two fish, after it was blessed, after it was broken, after it was given, after it was multiplied, now it takes 12 baskets to gather up the leftovers. That's God's math. Five plus two minus 5,000 full stomachs. The people of gospel says eight until they were satisfied equals 12. That's God's math class. That's an amazing, amazing rate of return. See if your investment advisor can offer you that. 
I, I enjoy looking at different gospel scripture translations. I actually have a Bible, a New Testament Bible, that has eight different uh, scripture translations in the same volume. This is hours of fun, but the, comparing the different words that are used. And in our gospel uh, today, we're looking at John chapter 6, verse 10. The Lord says, make the people sit down. But I came across the New American Bible, and the same passage, again, John chapter 6, verse 10, is translated as saying, have the people, this is Jesus saying to his disciples, have the people recline. Have the people recline. And I think that's a more personal, intimate word. It, it speaks about a certain... I mean, I don't want to say casualness. We don't want to take the Eucharist casually. But it speaks about a more of a comfortableness, a more of, um, again, just his personal commit communion uh, with the Lord Jesus. Think of the disciples at the Last Supper. Think of the times that Jesus went to people's homes to celebrate and share a meal with them after he had forgiven them, after he had welcomed them back into communion with himself. People at the time of Jesus reclined at table. Just a comparison. So it does speak to us again about the Lord, his generosity, his desire to call us to himself. And finally, we have the foreshadowing in today's gospel of the priesthood. I came across some commentary um, on the spirituality of St. Hilary of Poitiers. And he had two particular I think really powerful, or for me anyway, very insightful applications of today's gospel passage. He says that the reason there were 12 baskets of leftovers at the end of the miracle of the multiplication is that each of the 12 apostles who were there were given a basket. A foreshadowing again of the priesthood. That they were already being commissioned already being sent out to feed and nurture the people with the word, with the sacrament, with the grace, with the power. Amazing, isn't it? Twelve baskets, twelve apostles. Here you go, boys. Each of you get one. Off you go. And for we priests, me in particular, I'll speak for myself, it, it was a good reminder that the Lord will provide me with the nourishment that he has for his people and wants me to give to his people. Catherine Doherty, the founder of the Madonna House, would always say repeatedly to the priests that she spoke to, give people Jesus. That if I'm giving people Jesus, if I'm feeding people with the word, with the sacrament, with the life, with the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit, that I'm just giving them what I'm taking out of the basket. Taking out of the basket, giving it to them, feeding them with the Lord, feeding them with Jesus. And so this, this passage from John chapter 6, only verses 1 to 15, it's the first again of, of a number of weeks that we're going to be looking at John chapter 6, is really powerful. There's a lot, lot in there. And the Lord... In his goodness, he, he crosses over to the other side. That's how our gospel passage begins today. It says that Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. And you recall that I said earlier that anytime we see that passage, Jesus crosses to the other side, it's always followed by a miracle. Coupled with that, the Lord then goes up a mountain, which is a place of encounter with God. And then he also, the same gospel says, raises his eyes. So you've got three key, total foolproof indications of the fact that a miracle is coming. And it was a big one. And it's a profound one. And it's a powerful one. And it does apply to your life and to mine. The people came. The people saw, 
people went. The people came, first of all, a large crowd kept following him. They saw, they all ate and were satisfied, and they went. Next Sunday's excerpt from John chapter 6 starts by telling us that the, the people got into the boats. They're looking for Jesus. They came, they saw, they went. We have come. Albeit online, watching this reflection, maybe you're getting ready to go to church this Sunday, maybe been to Mass a few times this week, getting ready to go again a few times this week. We have come. We have gone. We're going. We went. Why? When I go to experience Jesus in the Eucharist, do I anticipate encountering him on a personal level? They saw. What is it that you and I see when we participate in the Eucharist? We see the Lord Jesus humbling himself so much as to come among us under what appears to be bread and wine, but is actually his body and his blood to feed us and to sustain us. Lord, say only the word and my soul shall be healed. To experience the healing of the Lord Jesus. And then we go. The priest or deacon at the end of Mass says, Go. Go in the peace of Christ. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Go. Just go. <laughs> Off you go. Get out. Go. Go. We go back to our homes, schools, places of work gyms, coffee shops, wherever it is that we're going to testify to how we have encountered Jesus, that we come before the Lord as we are. The Lord ministers to us in our infirmities, in our needs. He opens his hands. He satisfies the desires of our heart in conformity with his will, and we are fed. The people, the gospel says, ate all that they wanted. They were satisfied. And that is a message that our contemporaries need to hear. Jesus invites us to be part of his math class. He invites us to be part of his economy. If, again, my investment advisor said to me, Hey, Alan, you know what? I got a great deal for you. Five plus two minus 5,000 equals 12. I'd say, hallelujah, sign me, <laughs> sign me up, right? But it doesn't work that way. But it does work in the economy of Jesus. It does work according to the mathematical formula of Jesus. Because when we give him, we offer him what we think is a little, he multiplies it and makes it into a lot. So the question is, Will I invest? Will I commit? Will I say today, Jesus, I only have a little, but I offer it to you. Multiply it. Transform it. Use it to make a lot. To bring more of my contemporaries, your people, uh, Jesus, into a living and lived encounter with yourself. So let us pray. So Lord Jesus, we thank you again for the gift of this day. We pray, Lord Jesus, continually for those of us who continue to struggle emotionally, psychologically, physically, spiritually, financially, as a result of this pandemic, Lord, that you administer to their hearts right now. Lord Jesus, remind them, Lord, of how much you love them. The mercy, the healing, the power, the grace, Lord, that you have for us. We just want to open our hearts to receive all that right now, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you allow yourself to be found, allow yourself to be encountered. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your overwhelming concern for our welfare. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the ways that you have indeed fulfilled and lived up to your promise that you would never abandon us. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you open your hand to feed us and you satisfy all the desires of our heart. Give us, Lord Jesus, give us, each of us, a heart 
that beats in union with your own heart. We repent, Lord Jesus, of anything in our life that is contrary to your desires, your will for our life. We want to surrender that right now over to you, Jesus. And in that place, Lord, that was occupied by self-will, self-interest, selfishness, Lord, fill us up with generosity. We come before you, Lord, as we are. We only have a little, but we voluntarily surrender it over to you. Our time, our talent, our treasure, Lord, just give it over to you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us your bride, the church, here on earth. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the ways in which we have benefited from the field hospital of the church. We pray, Lord Jesus, healing and forgiveness and reconciliation, restitution, justice, Lord, for those who have not experienced the church as a field hospital. That you would even now, Lord Jesus, just go before us. Show us, Lord Jesus, what you would have us do. And continue, Lord Jesus, your process of reconciliation and healing in the lives of all your people, Lord. Beginning with ourselves. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of the Eucharist. Help us, Lord Jesus, not to take advantage of you in the Eucharist, Lord. Give us the courage, Lord Jesus, the boldness, the conviction, Lord to go and do what we need to do in order to receive you, Jesus. Let us never forget, Lord Jesus, the hunger that we have for you in our hearts, Lord. And finally, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of the priesthood. We thank you, Lord, for the priests who have fed us spiritually, sacramentally, with the Eucharist, in confession, in the other sacraments, Lord Jesus. Continue, Lord Jesus, to raise up among us those you have called to be your priests, that they would have the generosity, the courage to say yes, and the encouragement of our own prayers. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you and we adore you. And St. Joseph and Mother Mary, please pray for us. Amen. Okay, well, there you go. God bless the rest of your week there. Don't forget, stay caffeinated. This cold brew stuff's pretty good. And remember, when we're powerless, that's when we're strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. Bye-bye. <laughs>